The food crisis is something which has come and gone. We had one in 2008, and 70% of that food spike was blamed on one particular issue, which was... Actually, it wasn't population growth. I'm talking about the UN study of what happened, because this, in that spike, there were riots in 33 nations and one government fell. This summer, the summer after that, I was talking to 500 generals and others in the Pentagon about how to, weigh, how to reduce conflict around the world. One of the issues was food, food prices. So what was the UN's verdict on uh, the reason for 70% of that food spike? No, it wasn't weather. It was biofuels. This year, 40% of all American wheat will be burnt in cars. Does it matter? Yes, it does. Uh, this year, uh, put your hands up if you drove, uh, if, you, if you usually drive to work. Did you know that you are burning 5% of all the miles that you drive in your car are being powered by grain? Did you know that? In fact, you can't opt out. It's not an ethical decision you're allowed to make. By law, you are required, by EU statute, you are required to burn food in your car. Put your hands up if you knew that. Now, whether or not that has, has actually contributed to 70% of that last food spike and is adding to 70% of the current food spike is an academic question. Remember, I said to you that the future is not about science or data. It's about emotion. And this is actually quite an emotional issue. So, for one reason or another, and this is complicated, and of course there's, there's uh, issues related to climate in there, and drought, and crop failures, and demand, and, and food hoarding, and speculation, and hundreds of issues, actually. Biofuels is certainly an interesting dimension, which is touching on retail. You see, what happened was, the moment we created uh, biofuels in any significant degree, we created a fusion between the price of your bread in Tesco or Sainsbury's or whichever chain you are here today. The price of bread in your store automatically became joined with the price of a barrel of oil because it became a single market. Because we create food, we turn it into oil. So if the oil prices go up, that means the food prices go up. It is as simple as that. So as oil prices are soared, of course, food prices are soared. Land prices are soared. Forest prices are soared. Anything and everything to do with agricultural prices are at an all-time high. So if you disconnect food prices from oil, then you come back to a more natural level.